Perfect. Okay. And let me pull up our chat. And chat didn't come up. There we go. Chat is pulled up. Hello and good evening. If you are live on Zoom, hello. I hope you're having a good evening. Uh, if you're listening to this, we do record it and we're recording right now. And then we upload it to our podcast and we upload it to YouTube. So you could be listening to it there too. Um, or you might want to re-listen to it and now you know where to find it. Either way works. Uh, what tonight is about and how we do these is if questions come up or if there's something you want to add and contribute, you use the chat button. If you have it, it's at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and it comes up with a little chat window and I get to them as we can. Uh, tonight is all about puppies and it's how to start your service puppy. That is the uh, focus for tonight, our service puppies. Now, what is a service puppy? Because I don't remember that. We talk about service dogs. We talk about service dogs in training. But nowhere do I remember talking about a service puppy. Well, it's a term that we coined that is a service dog prospect, right? So it's the puppies that you get with the intention of them being service dogs in training and passing and going on to be service dogs, right? Um, it's, that's what that is. That's, that's a service puppy. And we wanna start those service puppies off right. Uh, now you could also just call the dog a service dog in training and that's fine. There's not a problem with just calling the dog a service dog in training because that's really what the dog is. But we're cute, so we do service puppies. Uh, and, and it just makes it a little bit easier for some people. It takes the stress off. So they're not having to worry about, oh my gosh, I've got so much pressure to make sure that this little puppy that I just brought home eight weeks on up to do right to be a service dog sometimes guys, you know, you just have to step back and just say, you know what, like, let's let him just be a puppy right now. Right. So that's another reason why we call them uh, service puppies. Some people want to use service dog prospects or service prospect uh, until the dog's potty trained. Usually about four months old is when they're pretty decent potty training wise. Uh, six months old is easier. So some people wait until six months old. And I tell you, you guys know, we used to do pet and service dog board and train with outside dogs coming in and working with us. And we don't do that anymore. Right now, we just work with the Hope Service Dogs breeding program. You know, so we have the Goldens, uh, we have the Dobermans, we had the Poodles, uh, and that's, that's our focus right now. We are not taking in outside dogs, but you know, for many, many, many years, we did take in outside dogs and we worked with them. And a lot of those dogs came in at five and a half, six months old, and they were wild and they were crazy and they were totally out of control. So, you know, when I see our puppies that these guys now are four and a half months old, five months old, six months old, you know, I just think, holy smokes, they are head and tails past where you know, so many dogs are at a year or two, which is awesome. You know, that's, that's what we want. So service dogs, there's four main areas when you're training your service dog. Okay. And it, it kind of goes like in order, right? Relationship to you. Guys, this is super important is having a good relationship with your dog. And this is one of the reasons why our puppy program, our breeding program through Hope Service Dogs, the dogs can go home at eight weeks old. 12 weeks old, 16 weeks old, or six months old. Rarely do we keep the dogs longer than that. And we have, I'm not gonna say we don't ever do it. We have done it, but rarely do we because that bond with you is super important. And if we can get those foundation skills laid that we had talked about, what was it last week or the week before, the foundation skills that are needed. I told you the 20 things that every service dog needs because it is the core foundation upon which everything else is built then it's a lot easier for you. It's a lot easier for your dog. You're not going to get as frustrated, right? Because a lot of that heavy lifting, that early shaping molding is done. It's all taken care of. So yay, makes us very happy. But that relationship is key. Without the relationship, if you get a service dog from me or from anywhere else thinking the dog's going to be there to work for me all the time, period, end of story, 
it's not the case. Because even though we refer to service dogs as medical equipment, they are so much more than just medical equipment, right? They're, they're your partner in crime. Um, they could be your, your heart and soul, right? Um, I'm, I tell this to people all the time, right? Rich and I are married. This year will be 25 years that we've been married. We work together. We live together. We are together a lot more than most couples are because of that. But I still spend more time with my service dog because my service dog is usually right beside me. My service dog comes to the bathroom with me every time. My service dog doesn't decide he has to go to Publix to pick up something uh, or that he has to go to get gas in the vehicle. Like that's, that's what Rich does. You know, that's not what the service dog does. So it is a very strong bond and, you know, it's really a bond like no other. You know, it's something really magical, right? But it has to grow too. So even when the puppies go home at six months old, what are your first steps on raising up, training up your service puppy is to establish that relationship. And we're going to go over ways to establish that relationship in a little bit, um, but we're going to cover that tonight. Uh, it's play. A lot of it is play-based, guys. So if you, if you have a notepad, make sure you have your notepad because you're going to take notes, hopefully. Hopefully you'll take notes um, with this. But that relationship to you is key. That is the, the cornerstone upon which everything is built. Because if you resent that dog, if you resent that puppy because that puppy isn't as like pretty as what you were hoping it would be, or he's just like the wrong color, or he's the wrong breed, or he really wanted a girl and you got a boy, you know, like if those are what's more important to you than that relationship, you're always going to be resentful and you shouldn't be uh, because what you're given is such a gift. And I believe it was last week I was telling you guys about being at a whole different Walmart in a town that we were never in and somebody coming up to me and I was separate from everybody else. It's not like she ever heard us talking and saying, Vicki Boo is an angel sent for you. And my name is Vicki and my service dog at the time who I had with me was named Boo, which it's not like she said, you know, like Fido is here for you or Bella, you know, like just common names. Uh, Boo is a, a different name. Luke named her um, Monsters Inc. So if you wonder where the Disney came from, it came from a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So four main areas, relationship to you is number one. Number two is obedience training, basic off-leash, um, advanced service dog skills that are different from service dog tasks. Um, service dog tasks are the third, and then public access is the fourth, right? Because you need all four of them for having a service dog. You know, the obedience training stuff, the public access, because that's a different set of skills that are needed. And that's where some of those service dog skills come into play. Once you teach them, do they know under? Do they know how to navigate? Are they able to do tight corners in a single bond? Okay, so relationship, obedience training, public access training, and task training are the big ones. Next is you know, of course you need to be organized, but the, you know, having an organization system that works for you. Uh, we've talked about our index card system and our binders, and I am all for these, you know. So when I have just one service dog, like Gypsy and Arrow uh, and Django and Roma, they each had their binders. And I love having the binders. Now with the, all the dogs who stay for our puppy programs, I do not make binders for every dog. It would just be too much. Uh, and, and that's not happening. You know, I'd rather pull the dog, work the dog, and then, you know, the dog's good. And then pull another dog and work them instead of pull the dog, work a dog good. Okay, now let's write everything down that we just did, you know, because then I lose my, my flow and I only have so much flow time. I uh, see it's dinging me that Kathy raised a hand. Uh, go ahead, Kathy. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. What's up? Yeah. Um, I'm hearing impaired. And when you gave me the four things, it's too fast for me. Okay. Uh, it is relationship to you. Okay. I got that one. Obedience training. Okay. Public access training. Okay. 
and task training. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I, I do talk fast. I remember my grandma would, uh, would give me a hard time about that a lot. And I told her I wanted to be an auctioneer when I grew up. Well, not what happened, but I, I can't talk fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, so relationship games. So this is where I want to spend a lot of time tonight because this guys is the meat and potatoes. This is the big stuff that is going to change your relationship with your dog. And it is the first thing you need to worry about. A lot of people want to know, like, can I have a list of the commands that my dog knows? And what I tell them is your dog can know everything, but if you don't have that relationship, you're not going to get out of it what you want. Uh, and not only that, but there's just, there's a lot more to it. Um, we've also had, because remember, we've trained dogs for years, right? My husband loved to tell people that you're going to go home and you're going to think like these people did nothing with the dog. Look. You know, because if you go home and you go back to the same old, same old, your dog is going to go back to the same old, same old. Uh, and that's not what you want, right? Like we want new and improved 2.0, version 2.0. So you need to do it. But as your dog understands that you know the new rules and that they know the new rules, what happens is you're like, gosh, my dog is so smart and so easy to train now. I don't know what they did at that board and train, but my dog is super good for training now. Um, Abigail just posted to, just did a comment, uh, enable. Okay. Yep. So we can do live, uh, train, uh, CC option. Ha! Thank you. I did it. Thank you so much. Perfect. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yay. Awesome. So relationship games, we break them down into different categories. So we have touch games, play games food games, walkies, which is walks with your dog. My husband's like, really? You're, you're gonna call it walkies? And I said, yes, I am. And new things, which is a bonus, okay? So touch games. Touch games uh, include name game and the hand cup game. And the easiest one is gonna be the hand cup game, which is, this is from Marina Azuna, a great friend. And this, fingers spread out on your hands. So hold your hands in front of you, spread your fingers out as far apart as you can. Um, with your thumb kind of hanging loose in outer space, there is can be a little bit discerning, scary to the dog, right? It can be because they're like, what the heck? Why are you touching me? Why are you touching me like that? Instead, hand cup, cup your hands together, pull all your fingers together. So they are all touching each other <clears throat> on each hand. And what happens you can be flat or you can cup it a little bit just because it's a little more comfortable, a little more convenient. So if you were going to take a drink and you didn't have a cup and you had clean hands, right? This is what you do. And you put the two, two hands together and you could lift up or you can give your dog a drink of water, right? Like that. That's what it is, but you have two separate hands. Okay. So closed hand, nose to tail, touch your dog, run hands down your dog. You can do stripes down your dog. Not like tiger stripes, but like if he had a mohawk stripes. Nose to tail and top to bottom. And see where your dog is comfortable being touched. Maybe whenever you get to the back, he flinches, right? Why would that happen? Well, maybe your dog has a boo-boo there. Maybe he has a hurt. I don't know. You know, but if we... Uh, uh, chart colors would be a good one. And that's from um, training between the ears. If, if the dog flinches, if he's uncomfortable, we actually had a, a, a client whose dog hated having his vest put on him, hated it. And he was a good working dog. He hated having his vest put on so much so that he would, you know, he'd bulk, he'd shy away from it. He didn't want it on him, period. And it turns out it was hitting a spot on his back that was very sensitive just because of the cut of the vest. So if we switched up and put a harness on him and it wasn't touching and coming down on that spot, he was okay with it. So, you know, you have that and this, you can tell, you can see what's going on, right? You can give your dog a once over with this. See if there's any hot spots. See if your dog has any matting going on. 
uh, see if there's any sore sensitivity, any bug bites, you know, any swelling. As you're doing it, does the right side, does it feel the same as the left side? What happens if that right uh, thigh on your dog is really big and nice and like whatever thigh should be, and the left one, you can feel the bone. Well, that's not proportional, right? And because it's not proportional, what's going on? Like there could be an injury there. So we want to make sure that the dog's in good shape and uh, is there symmetry? I'm taking notes too, so I can update this whenever we're done because I want it to be the best ever, right? So that's hand cup game. And why are they games? Because games are fun and people like to do games with their dog. I like to do games. Uh, hand cup challenge maybe, right? Okay, the other one under touch is name game, otherwise known as name and explain. And there's four steps to the name game. I don't just really like the number four guys. It just happens to work out that way a lot. Speak, move, mark, reward. Okay, speak, move, mark, reward. And what this looks like is, here's my dog, woof, 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 right? I made a little hand dog in front of me here. Boop, 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 boop. Speak, and you can say, dog, I'm gonna touch your head. I've spoken, what's next? Move, so I can move, I can touch his head. Mark, I can say yes, and then reward and I can give food. Uh, what happens a lot of time is it all happens at once. So it'll look like this, and this is the wrong way to do it. You'd be like, I'm a touch your head. Yes, here you go, oh, we did it. See, that was successful. No, it wasn't successful. They're step-by-step step for a reason. Um, this can be answered later, but where, how can this be watched later on? It'll be on our podcast. Our podcast is called Service Dog Secrets, and it'll be up on YouTube. Uh, Heart and Soul, probably, but most definitely Hope Service Dogs. Uh, and the links are on our link tree. So if you need link links, I can, I can throw that link tree up there whenever I have a pause in conversation. But speak, tell the dog your intentions. And for what I tell some people to do is take your hands, put them on your thighs, grip onto your thighs so you're not tempted to move. Speak when you're done speaking, move while you're in contact, mark it, yes. For us, yes means stay in position, food is coming to you. So that's why we use a yes and then reward, right? And you can have that breath pause between them. Speak, I'm gonna touch your head, move, touching head. Mark, yes, and reward, right? You can slow it down, even on the super fast dogs. And what you're gonna find, again, this is um, training between the ears, which is TBTE, and Casey Cover in her perception modification uh, is, is like the grandmother of all of this name game stuff. And name and explain, which is what it is, is so hugely valuable to the dogs. Some people tell their dogs everything and some people tell them what they need to know and some people don't talk to them ever. I like to give them the information that they need. For example, if we hear a truck going down the road and it goes rah, 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 right? I might say that's a truck. If we're walking through the store and we hear a baby screaming, what am I gonna say? That's a kid. If somebody's coming up towards me and they're limping, maybe like pushing on a cane and limping or with a walker or just whatever, right? I might say that's a person or that's a person walking because it lets the dog know that yes, I also see what you see and it's not a concern because you hear the tone of my voice. Now, if I looked at it, I'm like, no, 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 don't, 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 don't look over there. Don't, don't look over at the truck. No, 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 that's a bad truck. No, 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 I, I, I don't want that truck. Do you think the dog's gonna be comfortable? The dog's not gonna be comfortable. The dog's gonna say, I knew that truck was bad. And dogs are gonna startle, right? It's gonna happen. 
they're not drugged up. Okay, cool. Like startle is going to happen. It is the recovery of startle that is huge. And sometimes what can happen is the dog has episode after episode of after episode and leads to a heightened response. And it could take months to get that dog back down to baseline chill. So if your dog, like we just had the 4th of July, right? It's the July 26th. 4th of July was 22 days ago. Say you're outside, the fireworks went off right beside you. Like it, it could be, oh my gosh, what was that? And then say something else happens and something else happens and something else happens and something else happens. That dog's gonna be in a heightened state of arousal. So these relationship games are gonna work to bring the dog back down to baseline. So then we can work with the real dog and not this, this dog who is on high alert all the time. So usually with name game, I will do the speak, move, mark, reward for body parts. And now the nice thing with that is if I can teach the dog their body parts, now think it doesn't have to just be head, it could be chin. And then what if for grounding, you want the dog to rest his chin uh, on your hand like this? right? What if we're doing a retrieve and I want the dog to put his head in here for whatever reason is a target. Just like put your head in here. Like I need this for whatever reason, or I'm putting booties on the dog and I want the dog to know his left side, his right side, or his front side, his back side, or just one foot, two foot, red foot, blue foot, right? I can do that. And I can also, because my dogs all know touch, um, and we'll do a two finger target touch, uh, like Casey Cover and TBTE also. I can do a touch here and do the front booty. I can extend my arm and do a touch out at the side. Now I can do the back booty. Then I can have them spin around, do a touch beside me again to get the other side front and move arms length away and get the other side back. And now the dog is targeting me. He's moving around me. And I don't have to get up and chase him down and fall on top of him trying to put his booties on him. And yes, every time you put booties on a dog, no matter how experienced, they're going to do the fun walk <laughs> in the beginning there. So I like name and explain in here. Andrea, who has Koji, says, yes, uh, Koji loves the name game and it has really helped our bond. And that's fantastic. Like I said, I love it. I think it's so nice. And guess what, Andrea? I've got name game 2.0 for you. You ready? And this is one of the things uh, Poodle Stella was back with us for uh, about a month. Uh, her owner had gone to camp. It was already planned before, before she, uh, she signed up to get Stella. So Stella came back here and we worked on some stuff. And we just did her go home this past weekend. And I'm going to show you what we worked on because it was super fun. And what we did is I had my sunglasses on you know, the front of my shirt. I just did it if you're watching, right? It was like that. And she came up and she booped my sunglasses. We were at the hotel work and doing the go home. So we started teaching her what sunglasses were. So I held them, and, you know, we did a touch. She came boot my fingers. I said, Stella, you know, like you want to target or do you want to touch the sunnies? And she wasn't positive, but she came and she booped them. And while she booped them, yes, and here's food. Or you can also say break in here's food, or you could clicker in here's food, right? And then we asked a few times, uh, Stella, you know, touch Sunny's. And then, and she did it. Stella touched Sunny's and she did it. And then we got out a treat bag, which I don't have, but I do have a normal bag right here, right? So then we put the Sunny's away for a second and we said, Stella, this is a treat pouch. Pretend it's a treat pouch, right? Touch treat pouch. And she came and she touched the treat pouch, marked it. And then I got difficult on her. And I told the owner, I said, I am jumping her up a couple levels, make it easier at home, right? But I wanna see where we can get them and give them a better idea. But I said, you know, she's gonna to need to go back and do some more with Sunnies, but you also don't wanna get them where they're bored. So I presented both of them at the same time. But at first I said, Stella, touch Sunnies. And I presented both. And she came and she touched the sunglasses. Like, honestly, she touched the sunglasses. I thought that was pretty cool. And we marked it, we rewarded it. Now, what would have happened if she would have gone to the food pouch? I would have just moved the Sunnies just a little bit. I would have just moved my wrist. And that movement probably would have gotten her. 
but I didn't need to because she got it once because we did this a few times and then we introduced her to a poop bag roll you know that you clip and you put poop bags in and it's like a little bag thing um we had all three of those and we were having her just do two at a time and like I said this is like her first session at doing any of these objects because you know we just happened to have them so we were using them but she would go pause maybe two inches away from the item so she wasn't touching think about it and then she booped the right item i tell you it was pretty neat to see now say you have a dog and you want to teach him to get the remote versus getting sunnies versus getting reading glasses versus getting your phone you can do that and this is how you can do that is you can say you know like here's the sunnies now be careful guys you really want them all slobbery from the dog and afterwards when i went out to the car they were filthy and had to be cleaned but we had fun working with them and they were like three dollars off of ebay i got a whole bunch of them at once so it worked out really good but you know use a case preferably a hard plastic case so the dog doesn't destroy your glasses you know that'd be like what vicky said too and they were 500 dollars glasses don't don't do it then use the el cheapo stuff use just a plain glasses case even without glasses in it and see uh, Kathy, your hand raised. Yeah, um, you say uh, tell them to do something and have them touch. Are they touching it with their nose, their paw, or what? That is a great question. I Thank like you. nose touches. Nose, nose touches good. to me are the best. One of my pet peeves, I don't have a lot of them, but is the paw because I always would end up with a dog if they knew paw coming in, that's all they want to do is offer the paw, offer the paw, offer the paw, rake the paw, rake the claw down my leg. And being in Florida, I wear shorts year round. So it's not like I have jeans on half the year or three quarters of the year, depending on where you live. So for me, I always do the nose bump, um, the nose touch. And then if they really, really need a paw, once everything's trained, we'll add in the paw because it's it's yeah that's one of my pet peeves but you know you could teach now what i do here's a pen and here's a pencil no you know maybe if i have a dog who's wicked smart who loves the game who gets it who knows it i can start seeing you know like maybe how they're gonna do but you know like don't give them your apple pencil like do stuff that is gonna work out well uh, but it, it is neat and like i said it is that step and then i can put him down and i can say you know stella get me the sunnies or Stella get me the treat pouch and she could go and she could do this and like I said I love it it's fun and think if you're having that much fun with your dog you know how cool is that um talk about relationship building game game 2.0 objects pot is great for adjusting odd shaped items stuck to the ground to move the item for a better grab yeah, yeah, a lot of mine will just like they'll nose it a little bit if need be to get to it. Um, some of them will paw, and that's too, uh, Madeline, where the um, those food toys we've done some TikToks with the food toys, uh, and usually Albert doing them, and he will paw his heart out trying to get to those. So, you know, if you want to, how do you teach a paw? How I teach is I'll just like do a little tap tap on the leg and get it up there and click whenever um, paws in my hands. Uh, I'll do that a few times or I'll try to get them where they're lifting up their paw, where they're targeting their paw. And then as they get it, but like, it's, it's like, it's one of my least favorites. I have a few, but that's a lot, but it's, I'm not saying it's, it's not good. Like I also don't like a jump alert, but we've trained a jump alert for, for somebody because it really worked out well for her dog and for her, for her issues. So like never say never. Okay. So those are the touch games that I like. Uh, and they work out very well to me. Um, I like seeing what happens because you do have to think. And usually it's not a, I say you do type of thing. It's where you're, you and your dog are partners together, which I think is a great way to go. Uh, next up are play games. I like to play with the dogs. And for some, they don't do a lot of the play stuff. And to me, like a little part of me just dies inside. Now you're not going to go to Publix with your service dog and say, my dog sat woohoo and chuck a ball down the aisle. It's not going to happen. And I totally understand that. And I'm not saying to do that at all, but what if you're at Publix and you want to work with your dog on whatever you want to work with your dog on, 
I don't care if it's just go and sit by the flowers to get a pretty picture, right? Um, or walk by the refrigerated section and not flip out, right? Like I want the dog to, to work or do whatever. And the dog's a little bit like, oh, this is a lot. Bring that toy out and play some oops retrieve and boom, you've got it. Or even if the dog's like, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. There's all this new stuff and I'm a little bit everywhere. You know, some oops retrieve and the dog's got it. Now, what do I mean by oops retrieve? Oops retrieve is one of my favorite things. And as we start playing the games, it turns into oops retrieve so much so that our four month old puppies are doing oops retrieve. Like they've got a task down. Usually uh, about five months old, four months old, five months old, they know uh, deep pressure therapy, um, DPT is what I call it, or LAP is, you know, is the command name for it, LAP. But they'll know that and they'll know uh, the oops retrieve, which is what happens when you drop something? What do you say? You say, oops. At least I say, oops. Everybody I know says, oops, because I take a poll. So they say, oops. And the dog comes, picks it up, and hands it to me. I had lent Albert to a friend, one of our volunteers who's been coming out, um, lent him to her. She works at Disney to get him some exposure down there. He has not been to Disney yet. He's been to Universal a few times, but he has not been to Disney. And she said that while she was working, she kept dropping stuff and oops, and he would pick it up and bring it to her. And that, you know, it was awesome. And it is, it's like the best task ever, right? You can always use a dog who picks up and hands you whatever you drop. So play games, there's a whole bunch on play that you can learn. And this isn't even gonna start to cover it. So to learn more first, I'm gonna give you the names of people to go to to learn more. There's three main ones. There's Ivan Balabanov. Um, Ivan is I-V-A-N and Balabanov is B-A-L-A-B-A-N-O-V. Yeah. That's it. He is in Plant City and he breeds Malinois. So you can also go to malinois.com, M-A-L-I-N-O-I-S, I believe. My brain, like I have this much brain power left today, not enough to remember how to spell things um, from just talking. But malinois.com, Ivan has a bunch of information out there on play, uh, really great stuff, okay? Another one is Michael Ellis. That's a lot easier. It's E-L-L-I-S. And he has a lot of stuff on Learberg, L-E-E-R-B-E-R-G or U-R-G. It's one or the other. Um, he has a bunch on there. Uh, if you search Michael Ellis and play, I'm sure you're going to find a bunch of videos. I'm sure he's got a bunch up on YouTube, a bunch of free stuff up on Learberg, little clips and videos. So like you can really go down so many rabbit holes, but it's play with Michael Ellis or play Ivan Balabanov. And then the third one is J Jack, J-A-Y and J-A-C-K. And J learned a lot from Ivan. He adores Ivan and he will be the first one to tell you that. Uh, J does workshops. He goes around the country and does them. I highly recommend it if anyone can get in to see him. If we ever get our building up, I wanna see if I can get him down here for a workshop in Florida. Uh, but J is, he's a fun guy. And he loves the play. So play games. We have some things that you can play with and some games that you can play with those. So first, I'm going to tell you some of my favorite tools during play. Cat chaser stick, you know, like the little wand with the little feather fluff at the end. That is a cat chaser stick. And I love that, especially for these little puppies. Um, we have a litter that is four weeks old and a litter that is three weeks old. And we could actually start it with the four week old litter, most likely um, this cat chaser stick. And what that will be is prey drive is what that is, but it's fun, right? Next one is a flirt pole, which is the, the PVC-ish stick uh, rope and a toy. It looks like a fishing pole, but it's not. Uh, but you can use it to fish for your dog. You can get your dog chasing it. And it's kind of like a bigger version of the cat chaser toy. Uh, the fort poles, you can make them. We used to make them. Chewy has them and Amazon has them. And they are just much easier now for me to order. Um, Sam had made one. She had a dressage whip with a hang on it. And then she put a noose in it and she'd noose up a stuffy, a stuffed animal, like a flat fox is what it was. And oh my gosh, my dogs love that. But then we ordered a few of the flirt poles from online. And so we will take all the puppies outside and we will there and 
you know, we'll just do big loops around the yard. Uh, you know, we don't want to hurt the dogs. So be careful with how quickly you turn, but it is a great way to get that prey drive going uh, because it's chasing something. So if you have a dog who has that and you need a good funnel for it, cat chaser or flirt pole. We'll do that with everyone. We'll do that with the poodles. We'll do that with the, um, we did it with the Dobermans. We'll do it with the Goldens. We do it with all the dogs because I like it. Okay, what else can you do? You can do stuffed animals. Why stuffed animals? Well, if it's a dog stuffed animal toy, it probably has a squeaker in it. Guess what a squeaker it reminds them of? Yeah, the prey. The squeak, squeak, I'm a chipmunk, chip, 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 right? So you can do stuffed animals, and then we're going to play some of these games that we have that I'm going to tell you about in a second. Uh, balls, don't use tennis balls. You know tennis balls, the felt on the tennis balls uh, will wear away their teeth. You'll end up with nubs. Um, it can hurt them. It can, you know, they can pop them in half. They can um, swallow them. I do balls. I like the bigger balls. My favorite balls are the yellow and green star mark balls, S-T-A-R. M-A-R-K, star mark balls. I love the big green ones. You can also put food in them and you can use them as food dispensing toys. And the yellow ones can have a little handle on them or not. Uh, but they're usually bigger so the dog can't swallow it, which is nice. Uh, we'll use Kongs. Uh, we'll use Chuckets. I prefer the bigger size Chuckets for my adult dogs, just so again, they can't swallow it because you gotta figure emergencies happen because people aren't expecting something to happen. But I like balls <laughs> uh, for the dogs. The dogs like balls. So it's a nice one for them. And then uh, the last one I have on here, and of course this is by no means the, the last one period, but is these Pooler toys, P-U-L-L-E-R. And it sounds really weird, but what it is is it's a purple circle and it's a ring. Like it, I think it floats. Um, you can use it for tug, you can use it for chase, you can use it for fetch. You know, it has a bunch of uses. They had actually sent me a couple when I first, that's how I first heard about them is they offered to send me a few to try out. And I adore these toys. I, you know, we'll buy them, we'll go through them. You know, the dogs love them. They have different sizes and usually they come in a pack of two and they're about 25 or $30, I think for the pack of two. They are amazing. They are one of my favorites. The dogs do really well with them. So I highly, highly recommend the pooler toys. Uh, just, you cannot give it to your dog and let your dog go to town on it. Right, that's not gonna happen. But with all of these toys that we just talked about, since you know we started the play games, the cat chaser stick, the flirt pole, the stuffies, the balls, the poolers, those are two person toys. This isn't, I'm gonna give my dog this and he can go to town on it. Now maybe stuffed animals, maybe he does have it and he doesn't destroy it. My dogs, especially Alita, will destroy the stuffed animals. So I don't let them have access to them unless they steal them from the puppy pen, but I don't let them have access to them unless we are playing together. So that means that they're up in a tote box, like maybe up on a bookcase, you know, if you're a normal person with like one dog, if you're us with 16 puppies, what, four adults, two boys, plus two boys, plus, uh, you know, some younglings that we're growing out. And we have a lot of dogs here. We have a whole giant tote of them with a lid on it and we'll open it up and we'll pull ones out. And then when we're done, we'll put them away. But those are some of the toys I like to play with. Now, how do you play with a dog? You put your phone away maybe set a timer on your watch for five minutes or 10 minutes. And during that time, you're going to give your dog active engagement. You're going to be actively engaged with your dog, right? You're going to keep an eye on him. You're going to see what he's doing. You're going to respond to it. You're not going to be like, yeah, it's a flirt paw. Uh, it's super fun, isn't it? Like, would you want to play if I did that? So why do you expect your dog to play if you're going to act like that? No. Instead, think about it. Playground rules. Like you want to play. This is um, elementary school. You wanted to go out on the play yard. It was fun. You go out, you play games, you come in, you'd be all good and you'd be happy. This isn't, you know, middle school where you're like, I'm so calm. I can't go and play kickball, right? That's not that. You, why do we not have play time in middle school? It's crazy, right? So what games can you play with the stuffies, the balls and the poolers? You can play monkey in the middle. If you have another person and the dog's the monkey in the middle, 
and he can't get it. And guess what? He's really going to want it because you guys are going to ill and awe over it. You can play keep away. Now, why is it that your dog doesn't want the toy that you keep shoving in his mouth, but he wants the shoe that you keep stealing back from him and hiding so he doesn't see it? One is you want the behavior, the other is you don't. But for the dog, what one is more enticing? That forbidden fruit. So keep away can work out really good. You'd be like, I've got it, it's mine. Ha <laughs> ha, and you can't have it. Oh, you can do two toys. I can remember the pool where I told you comes in sets of two. So if they have one, you could be like, well, ha, huh, I've got the other instead of, well, I don't know what to do now. So even if we go out with a chuck it launcher, like I'm going to take a couple balls, maybe three balls and put them in pockets, hold an extra one in my hand, have one in the chuck it stick. I'm not going to just, you know, take one ball out and hope that that works for the whole time. Have a backup plan. You can do chase the toy and that's similar to the flirt pole and the cat chaser stick. You can get a stuffed animal, you hit the pole, and whoo, look what I got. You can't have it. Why noises? Because sound effects make everything cooler and better. You can also play the look what I have game. So if I said, like, look what I have, these are awesome and amazing. And they're really cool. And oh, they're broken. I didn't realize they were broken. And they go like this. And how many glasses bend outward like that? Uh huh. Yeah, well, guess what? You can't have them. <laughs> no, these are mine. These are so mine. And like, they're not yours. And I'm just going to like look at them. And maybe while I'm looking at them, I'll toss them up in the air and catch them. <gasps> wow, that was super fun. <gasps> yes, I really like that. Woohoo! <laughs> no, 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 there's still not for you. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. These are mine. Right? Now, say it's not glasses, say it's a ball or a pooler or something, right? Get the dog interested in it. You know, I've got a trick here, see, because you guys never know what you're going to get whenever you tune in. Here's a trick for if your dog won't come up to you and your dog's out loose and you're trying to catch your dog. If you chase your dog, the dog's going to run away from you and be like, ha ha, I'm winning. If you turn and run away, that's usually better, but sometimes the dog's still like, ha ha, no, I know that game. So what you do is you squat down in the grass and you're like, oh, Look at this really cool thing I just saw. And it's so cool. I'm not even paying attention to the dog anymore. I'm looking at this really cool, awesome thing on the ground. Guess what's going to happen? He's going to be like, what is it that you found? And you're going to be like, like grass and dirt. Well, the dog's going to be like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever too. And then you can get your dog and you can reward your dog for coming to you. Don't get mad at your dog. Don't yell at your dog. Don't be like, oh, you stupid dog. But you know, like that whole keep awayness could be pretty cool. Um, Kimberly asked, how often do you recommend coming to visit if relatively local, like they are to help in the bonding process? Kimberly, as much as you would like to, um, if you'd like to come out this weekend or this week, let me know. Uh, we usually have somebody here. We always have somebody here. So it makes it easier. Um, we have somebody coming out on Sunday. Uh, they're dropping off and um, they're bringing kids, little kids. So that'll be fun. So we get to introduce the pups to little kids because I don't have any littles. Uh, so maybe if Saturday works for you, if someday through the week works for you, you just let me know uh, and I'll check our calendar and see. Like I have a crown, a temporary crown that like popped off at dinner of scrambled eggs today. It popped off an eggs. So I have to go into the dentist tomorrow. Um, but you know, so things come up, but uh, but yeah, definitely come on up as much as you as you want to. If you want to come up twice a month, if you want to come up, you know, weekly. Um, if you come up, I will put you to work. Uh, you know, you can see puppies. You can snuggle puppies. That's part of it. Uh, and, you know, like as they get older, you know, you can do training sessions. You can help out with some of the other dogs also. Um, and it's one thing that I do encourage everybody who comes out who's getting a puppy um, is, you know, you're going to be handling other dogs also because, Say your dog doesn't ever do this one thing, well, then you don't know how to fix it. But if you get your hands on multiple dogs, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, how often do you recommend playing those games with a new puppy uh, once it's first home with us? Um, I recommend, uh -huh. we also have food games and walkies to cover, but I recommend doing one from each. Do a touch game, either name game or the hand cup game. Do play games, do a food games, do walkies is a little bit like right now it's hot. So I don't walk as much. We'll just play a little bit more. 
Um, but Luke and Rich will walk them up and down the driveway, up and down the front yard. Um, our other trainers will come out and they'll do that also. Um, and then we do walking on outings. But I recommend doing at least one from each set of games morning and one from each set of games evening. So to me, the play is the most important. The touch games is second. Food games is also important. But, you know, I want to hit all of those, all three of those, at least twice a day. Um, and you don't need to have any, like, really decompressed time. As soon as your dog gets home, like, on the drive home, you can use name and explain and tell your dog, like, we're in the car. This is where we're going. I'm, you know, Barbie, and this is my boyfriend, Ken. And we're going to go in the car here and go through this drive through And yeah, yeah. And then when you get home, play, you know. Uh, play, get them outside, get them run around a little bit, get them to explore their new yard, get them to start that relationship with you immediately. Uh, once they're outside playing, hopefully they'll potty. They potty, you can always mark and reward that. If your dog's been clicker charged, we clicker charge all of our dogs before they go home. Uh, you know, try it and see. Some dogs are like, I've never heard that before. But the nice thing with the clicker is it means the same thing coming from me and it sounds the same. Coming from me, coming from anybody right? It's going to sound exactly the same as opposed to I use yay, yes, and you use yours, and you use break, and you use good, and you use okay, right? So it's nice because it is that similarity across the board, and, um, you know, it, it just, yeah, I like that. I like doing, uh, just getting right into it. So I'll get right into it with some play. I'll get right into it with, uh, with food training, which we're going to come up next, uh, you know, even if it's just, you know, toss a couple kibbles on the ground or click and toss, click and toss, click and toss, click and toss. There's like time to eat between those. Kimberly says, okay, just want to make sure, especially since uh, once we know which ones are so they can bond. And of course, I'm the chef or good because uh, we need to talk about the uh, harnesses too. Um, food games. Food games. There's four food games. <laughs> I told you guys, magic number four. You can feed your dog by hand one or two kibbles at a time and just do two kibble one or, you know just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit you can use it during training and have the dog work for it click and toss some food over there click and toss some food over there you know yes and bring the food right to the dog for room service excuse me you could do a mad dash which is chase each kibble so i'll do this this is one of my favorites i will sit and uh, especially uh, if the weather's yucky outside and they can't really get outside to play, I'll sit you say in the middle of the hallway or in the living room and I will have the dog sit or touch my hand or look at me, right? Like if the dog looks at me, I'll click, which marks and ends the behavior and I will toss some food down that way. Maybe a few kibbles, right? When the dog will go down there, might be I'll say, go get it and toss, right? Go down there and get it. What are they teaching? They're, or what are they learning? They're learning a Sunday way. And then you're going to say dog's name or just come. Like our dogs also know come usually pretty decently by the time they go home at eight weeks old. So it'll be, you know, puppy come or they also know puppy, 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 puppy come. And the puppy's going to come to you anyway because you have the food and he knows it, right? So he comes to you, good puppy, touch, sit, whatever. You know, let me see your chin. Perfect. Click throw food this way. Now the puppy's going to go down there and get it and come back to you. So it wears them out, which is really nice, but it's a mad dash. It's just back and forth and they get the food, they eat it. It's super fun, right? Like they're, so we did this with my brother. My brother's 10 years younger than I am. My sister's four years younger than I am. And then I tried it with Luke and it works out amazing. Even if Luke was like, I don't want to do it. We just ignored him and we just did it anyway. But what it is, is I'm going to time you. Okay, so you're like, um, can you go get me this? And, and if he's like, no, well, I'll, I'll time you and see if you can beat your last numbers, right? What last numbers? I, I don't know. So you just say like one, two, three, four, or like the timer's already going on my phone, right? So then he's going to hurry up because it's play, right? Because it's game, because it's win. And even if like Luke was like, I don't want to, I just start timing and he'd run to do it because he has to win. Right. Think of the video games that that you play or that, you know, who people who play. Right. Like they're silly video games, but you still you want to win. <laughs> Kay said I would do that with my baby sister and then just stop counting. Right. 
or sometimes, oh my gosh, they're like, did you, did you tie me? And you're like, um, yeah, you were 15. But, well, but you know, like it's that game, it's that part of it. And it's that mad dash, right? With the reward, it's super fun. Um, and then you could also do box work, right? And that's the box and you just plump, 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 plump food into it. And it works out well, and it works out well for focus also. So those are food games that you can do by hand. You could, and there's four of them, right? The feed by hand, the during training, the mad dash and the box. You can also use a puzzle bowl. Now, either one with like a slow feeder or like an actual puzzle bowl once a week is what I tell people. Like, don't go overboard with it. You don't have to do a puzzle feeding every day. There's so many other things you can do for food. Like, don't waste it all with the puzzle bowl. Now, if you want to put like your dog eats three cups of food a day and you want to put one cup in the puzzle bowl and he gets that as like a dessert when he's done with his training, go for it. Go crazy. It'll be fun. Uh, you can also scatter feed. I do this and Rich gets so mad at me. So I try not to do it after the cleaners come. I try to do it before. So the cleaners are hopefully coming tomorrow. So I did it tonight in the kitchen is I just take their bowls of food that do not have powder added to them. It's just the bowls of food and, you know, maybe some omega supplements um, and some glucosamine supplements. Um, so they'll get the supplements, right? And then I'll just scatter the food in the kitchen or I'll scatter it out on a patio. And then we'll just release the hounds and, and they can all go to town eating. Now, if you have a dog who has food aggression, don't do it. Period, don't do it, right? Work with a trainer. I'm not saying do this if there's any chance, but if you have one dog, just say do one dog at a time, make it easy. If you have one dog, just scatter feed and they can go out and they can just eat it all up. Now, say you have a dog who needs to keep busy and it's raining and it's disgusting. And now it's decent outside. You know, it's funny, you could toss it in the yard and they can snuffle up for all of it in the grass if they need something harder. You know, but I like it. It's mental, but it's not terrible. The problem is like, there's a bunch of lick spots on your floor when you're done. And then jackpot, you put your money on your sticky spots. So say you're having a hard time with down. Your dog downs. Yes, jackpot. That's it. So use your jackpot. Your dog doesn't want to be in the car. Get him in the car. Jackpot. You're done. Right? And some dogs are going to be like, no, wait a minute. Wait, what? I, I, I was playing that. This is fun. What, why are we stopping? Uh, walkies. Two 15-minute walks a day, morning and evening. Uh, when we were in Gainesville and doing outside walks, because uh, we were in a condo, it was we would get up at 6.30 in the morning. We get up, we'd take him for a walk, seven and a half minutes out, seven and a half minutes back. So potty, potty at seven and a half minutes, seven and a half minutes back. So I knew no matter which direction we went where the seven and a half minute marks were. So it was a 15 minute walk. It's really not long, right? Morning and evening. Make sure it's cool enough. Make sure your dog's ready for it. New puppies going home. It's usually one in a shorter walk. Maybe it's one... Um, five minute walk outside if, if they're super young or maybe we're working on heels. So we're outside, your dog's on a 20 foot leash, your puppy is. And anytime your puppy's at your left side, you click, you drop some food and you take a couple steps away and wait for him to finish and catch up with you. Teach him that it pays to be at heel. And then your bonus is your new things. Uh, what's that party? <laughs> I've done this, I love this. Um, thunder, we have thunder boom or thunderstorms every afternoon in Florida in the summertime. So what do we do? The thunder cracks, boom, like it's really loud. What was that? That was thunder. Name and explain. And I throw food at them. So during most days now, thank you to Sam, I wear a fanny pack and it has food in it for the dogs. Sometimes I take it off if I take a nap, but often I just wear it. I'll wear it out even if I don't have a dog with me because now it has my stuff in it too that I need for the day. But uh, we'll toss food at pups or we'll engage them in play. We have a dog. Uh, who is a little bit unsure about big loud trucks and she's uh, with us right now and so we're going to work her um, inside the chain link fence I have a six foot chain link fence surrounding the entire property but we're going to work her down by the road some uh, as she gets comfortable with it and it'll be all in play right it'll just be playtime her and a couple others and they'll play and they'll play and they'll play and as trucks will go by she won't care because she'll be involved in play so so you can use them for good things too and you can also and great for fireworks too yep you betcha kimberly i like it and then the other thing you do during new things is name game what was that that was a firework isn't that funny okay but those are the first things that you're going to do 
with your dog whenever they come home. Um, you're also gonna crate your dog. Crate your dog. Your dog sleeps in the crate. Your dog is in the crate, not just in the evenings, but during the day also. And the crate door is shut and latched. Because I've talked to people who don't shut and latch it. They're like, well, they, they can go into the crate if they want to. I'm like, no, you have to put them in the crate. Okay, training sessions are short, five minutes maximum. And set a timer with your phone. Okay. And my mouth hurts. So I'm done. Do you guys have anything to add? Um, go ahead and add and we'll wrap this up in just like a minute or two. Now, I don't think I have any more scheduled because that's all I had scheduled for July, but I will be putting up webinars for August. I have to, you know, plan out our, our month next month. Uh, and once I get those, I will put that up in that link tree so you guys can get in and register. If you guys have any ideas on what you would like to add in, I think communication um, will be one because of what the words mean. Um, communication is huge. Thank you so much. Great info. Thank you, Ashley and Sandy. Um, I appreciate it, guys. Like I said, I can't train them all. I'm um, holler the pups on their first outing to a theme park. It all depends. We've done some of it eight weeks in a day. Um, we've done some others where, you know, they don't go until they're four, five, six months old. Um, you know, everyone, every litter is a little bit different. And whenever it's hot, I don't go. It's just, it's too hot. Even to go in the evening right now, it's just too hot. Um, but you know, we, cooler months are coming. So yeah, uh, any particular age to phase out hand feeding and stuff? No, like if I'm working with the dogs, like I can still do the hand feeding for training. Like, and I'm usually not gonna be like, here, like just eat out of my hand. But like, I'll still pull it back if I'm trying to get good pictures. I'll be like, here's some food. Um, I would love one on starting public access. That sounds good. I'll add that to my list here, starting public access. Can we speak on the phone when available? Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead and text me, Eliza. Abigail, can you do something on box work? Oh yeah, 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 I can do box work. We're actually gonna redo the entire online course. We're gonna have a whole thing on box work. And when you have a, what is, uh, Deb, um, you have a second dog who is trained with the new puppy. <laughs> Yeah, Deb, text me and let me know how things are going with um, New Girl, with Freya, or not Freya, whatever you decided on. But I'm going to go, the dogs are out there playing, and I'm going to go get involved with them. So yeah, text me, guys, if you need me for anything. We'll have something on working heel with a wheelchair. Oh, that's that would be a good one. Wheelchair, work, and heel. Okay, and I do a lot of my training sitting down, so the um, wheelchair is pretty easy. Great info, thanks for sharing. You betcha, Caitlin uh perfect thank you i've got like four new ideas here uh introducing new puppy to current dog intro new puppy to current dog got that on there too yay yay thank you guys i appreciate it perfect i hope you guys have a super week tomorrow my parents close on their house up here in lake panasofki so woohoo um here jessica says i would love more info on training a service puppy with other dogs, not service dogs in the house. So intro puppy to current dog, service dog, or pet. I will add that in there. Perfect, Jessica. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Awesome, awesome, perfect. So I will catch you guys later. Thank you, I hope you have a fantastic week.